Dear friends and followers, today I'll be answering another great question many of you have asked me in the past. Why do you hear this voice 50, 40, 30. shortly prior landing in many approach and landing videos you see here on YouTube? So let's get started. Uh, 1383, runway 27, clear takeoff. And that is The voice you can hear in the background is the height readout of the radio altimeter. The concept of the radio altimeter is fairly easy. You have one transmitting antenna and one receiving antenna installed at the rear part of the fuselage. The transmitting antenna emits radio waves leaving the aircraft downwards until hitting the earth's surface and most of the radio waves get reflected and travel back up to the plane where they get picked up by the receiving antenna. The radio altimeter computer then measures the time it took for the radio waves leaving the aircraft, getting reflected by the earth's surface and received by the receiver antenna. Now, radio waves travel at the speed of light, so the speed of light divided by the time it took will give you a distance, or in our case, a height. The calculation looks very similar to this. Okay, now let's look at the speed of light, which is normally given in meters per second. Okay, this means that it travels at 299,792,455 meters per second. Now the thing is in aviation that most of it isn't given in feet. So, but that is a fairly simple calculation. You just have one meter equals 3.3 feet, meaning you just have to multiply 3.3 times this will give you the speed of light in feet per second. Okay, there we have it. Now we have the speed of light in feet per second. And now let's say that the radio altimeter has measured a time from one radio wave transmitting downwards, getting reflected and getting picked up again with the receiving antenna. And the time it took to do that is 0.0000005 seconds. Now, as you may can see, this is the simple rule of three. So what you're gonna do is you just can already see that you can cross out the seconds and you've got left over the feet. So just multiply this times this divided by one gives you 5,000 feet. It's as simple as that. So we've successfully calculated the 5,000 feet, but you have to divide that by two because you only want the distance downwards and not the way back up again. So that would give us 2,500 feet. So on the Airbus A320 family, the radio altimeter becomes active at 2,500 feet and announces that by a synthetic voice calling out 2,500. So as a pilot, you are now aware the radio altimeter has come active and is working normally. Side note. If there were to be a problem with the synthetic voice computer, but the readout comes up on the pilot's flight display, the pilot monitoring would call out radio altimeter live, following by a confirming checked by the pilot flying, and any further callouts would have to be made by the pilot monitoring. So when you make use of the radio altimeter, when flying down any kind of approach in bad visual weather conditions, it is a nice help showing you how high you are at the moment. But you should be aware of your geographic surroundings because the radio altimeter gives you a height above ground indication and not a barometric altitude. Meaning the radio altimeter can show a lower height than the barometric altitude like in this given picture. This can be hazardous and confusing if the terrain below is constantly changing. So you want to concentrate on the barometric altitude rather than on the radio altimeter readout. So where is it useful? It is a great help during landing and flare. When coming in for landing, your eyes start transitioning from the instruments onto the runway so that you can adjust your lateral axis of the plane with the runway center line and as you are in a constant descent, the radio altimeter will read out the height above ground. 
Now, when it calls out 50, you will already be over runway tarmac making the readout very accurate and from that point on it's more or less a countdown to the point where you reduce your sync rate or better known as the break and start your flare. The flare should be initiated at 20 feet on the Airbus 8020 and the famous call out retard. Retard. will remind you to retard your thrust levers to the idle power. Haha, <laughs> yes, very funny, the Airbus calls the pilot a retard. That joke is getting really old. <laughs> no matter if you're flying with the auto thrust engaged or manually, it will always remind you or in some cases advise you to pull back the thrust levers. The Airbus A320 family is equipped with two radio altimeters, one for the captain's primary flight display and another one for the co-pilot side. In case that one radio altimeter fails, both flight displays will indicate the height of the remaining one. But in that case, the aircraft would be reduced in its landing capability down to CAT2, which would make an automatic landing of the aircraft not possible but more about the Autoland and the ILS categories in future videos. So as you can see, it is a great help when it comes to landing and flaring the aircraft just before touchdown, and it's very reliable. I haven't had a flight yet where the radio altimeter was inoperative or failed during approach. By the way, the synthetic voice comes out of the loudspeaker fitted closely to the primary flight display and it overrides the volume control even if the speaker is turned off. I hope you enjoyed this short little video today about the radio altimeter. Make sure to subscribe my channel for more detailed videos in the future and spread the word. Thank you much for your time. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe. Now you might ask, why are the antennas placed at the far rear of the aircraft and not below the cockpit where you as a pilot would be sitting? Now we've all seen planes land. Now just prior touchdown, the cockpit is higher in the air than the tail due to the pitch attitude of the plane. Now looking at this picture, a radio altimeter measuring the height at the front of the aircraft would lead to a higher indication, although the tail is a couple of feet lower. Now if you would draw a line from the landing gear to the radio altimeter antenna, you would see it is fairly parallel to the ground. So you could say that the radio altimeter gives the pilots the information on how high the landing gear is above ground in that crucial moment of the flare.